Hello and welcome back and today we're going to continue looking at the Synology 880 5300 series of hard drives. We've already done a comparison against the WE Red Pro series and we're going to continue with our single drive testing, this time taking the 8TB drive from Synology and comparing it against an UltraStar series enterprise class drive. This is the 10TB DCHC3300 drive and this drive although larger in capacity and larger in caching I do think still were, is worthy of comparison. It's worth highlighting that because of its larger capacity and its larger cache on board chances are it is going to be the high performing drive between the two of them. So do bear that in mind throughout the course of this test. And we are going to be looking at noise generated throughout the course of this video because these two drives do have very, very different noise levels when in utilization, both in consistent uh, noise when it's in operation and just generally with spin up and spin down when we've done testing in the past. Now, we are running a OneDrive test today, but we will be looking at RAID arrays utilizing the brand new RS3621XS Plus, which is slightly off camera there, where we've been running four disks of the WD, sorry, the WD um, Ultrastar series, the WD Red Pro series, and four of the Synology 880-5300. So do stay tuned for that video. But today, we're looking at single drive utilized environments. We're going to be looking at spin up noise. We're going to be looking at AJA performance benchmarks. We're going to be looking at Atto Disk benchmarking, IOs, and read write performance, and some 10 gigabyte transfer file types, where we're going to be looking at how long it takes for a single 10 GMKV file and 10 gigabytes of uh, comprising of 6,000 files onto these drives. Without further ado, let's get straight into the testing. We're going to start with the spin-up noise of the Synology 8AT and go from there. Let's get to the screen. Right, so the first drive to test is the Synology. We've got that ambient noise there at spin up, and we can see how it compares against the Western Digital Ultra Star now. As expected, we've got that initial like kind of dithering noise there at spin up, and if we listen to them together, and much like our testing previously when we were looking at the uh, Western Digital uh, Red Pro series, we certainly saw the amount of noise being generated being very, very noticeable there on the Ultrastar drive. Still, nevertheless, they do seem to have got into their stride now, so we can make our way into the AJA performance testing shortly. But overall, definitely the Synology is the quieter drive of the two. Making our way onto AJA for the performance benchmark here, we're going to get a good sign here into the noise that's generated and the performance difference between the WD Ultrastar drive and the Synology HAT5300. So, some early things to take note of immediately. You must have seen there that the write performance on the Western Digital Ultrastar drive is higher. Of course, and I will have to highlight this a few times during the course of this test. I did not have an 8TB Ultrastar to hand. We are utilizing a 10TB Ultrastar, which has uh, a fractionally larger amount of cache comparatively, and consequently that will be dictated in the performance. So, unfortunately, due to the lack of a Western Digital Ultrastar 8TB, this is going to sway performance a little bit. Um, if you look at the specification for the 8TB Ultrastar uh, in the DC series, it still apparently would have been higher anyway, but around about 245, 250. So although there is a huge disparity there of around 40 megs on write and around 30 to 35 megs on read, it's realistically about 10 to 15 megs. But still, nevertheless, it has to be noted that the Western Digital Ultra Star is certainly the winner in terms of general performance between the two of them in this single drive environment. So what else can we garner from this? 
Well, have a look at the graphs there on the left hand right hand side of the screen. Now, in terms of um, traditional write, there seems to be a more consistent thread there on the Synology, but in terms of read, thanks to that larger amount of cache bestowed upon the 10TB drive comparatively, the result is a more consistent read on the Ultrastar, even based on the test that we're performing. Now, if we do look a little bit more at the noise generated, and of course there has been ambient noise, a number of you must have noticed the noise of rain uh, in the previous uh, spin-up testing, it's worth highlighting that uh, between the two of them, once again, the Synology is a consistent line there in terms of noise being generated with the Ultrastar making a lot more clicks, hums and whirs. Now, obviously, as mentioned in my other videos, in rack mount environments, you're not really going to care. But if you're using desktop environments, if you are going to be in close proximity to this device, or if you are going to be in relative close proximity to a 2, 4, 6 or 8 bay device, you are going to clock this noise difference quite significantly when we've got audio tests running throughout this range coming very very soon but for now let's move away from this four gigabyte aja test and onto atto for our disk benchmark Now for Atto, we looked at a couple of things. We looked at the IOs and we looked at the read-write performance. Once again, a 10TB versus an 8TB is a little bit unfair, but it's worth highlighting that on the bat. So if we look first and foremost at those IOs, something we don't generally look at when it comes to hard drives, largely associated with SSDs, I think IO should be monitored on Enterprise or Pro Series drives simply because these are going in larger spread environments where, you know, IOP readings at the tens of thousands can add up. And they, although they will never challenge the two, three hundred thousand IOPs reported on SSDs, you can see some decent numbers for your capacity there. Now, again, straight away, the uh, Ultrastar there has absolutely ran with it. Um, and also, if we look at the read-write performance, the dictated numbers that we saw on the AJA testing have run through and played out there on Atto there with the drive from the Western Digital there hitting an impressive uh, 279, 280 um, megs per second there at right with read dipping slightly. I think a lot of that, as mentioned before, it's to do with the screen recording software happening simultaneously um, on this system along with recording, but still nevertheless, notable performance differences there between them on these two data center class drives. Um, next, we're going to move over to a 10G Windows file test. So let's head over to that now. Now, this is really a blink if you miss it test. This is a single 10G MKV file, so 10 gigabyte file being transferred um, over uh, USB, so no capping here. And straight away, we're seeing that consistent and high performing thread on the Ultrastar taking that drive through. And it's almost certainly going to beat the Synology. And again, if this was a mixed file test, I'd probably be a little bit more. <clears throat> even about this but again straight away on a single drive capacity there it is absolutely running it uh, there on the ultrastar side of things again noisier threshold there on the db sensor but overall it finished and got there at the end much much faster indeed so in the next test we're going to look at 6,000 files to add up to 10.3 gigabytes but for now we've got to give that round to the ultrastar Now we've sped this transfer up at five times speed. So again, you, other than waiting, you guys wait for minutes upon minutes, but straight away the WD was tackling those heavy files very early doors and ramped up that extra bit. And I think a lot of that comes down to that extra cache that the drive is arriving with. And of course, 10 TB versus 8 TB, we've got to highlight that again. But still, nevertheless, performance threshold wise, it certainly took the lead there overall and certainly completed the job a noticeable degree faster there so again looking at the ultra star drive as a whole 
it does seem to be the fast drive in a single usage capacity. I do want you guys to hold off and reserve your judgment for when we go for the RAID performance testing. We do have an RS3621 uh, XS Plus here. Lovely 8-core Xeon-based system that we're going to be putting four WD Ultrastars, four WD Red Pros, and of course, the four Synology HAT5300 8Ts to see if... The performance of these drives really does get fleshed out on a Synology branded system. For those of you that have been following the Synology HAD 5300 series uh, that we've been doing prior to this and some of our other coverage, you'll know that some people aren't overly fond of the idea of Synology locking in some of the compatibility on their top end equipment as well as um, uh, firmware uh, I say warranty and support locking a number of their drives to only their systems. It makes a lot of sense. And it's quite an enterprise move, uh, but it's going to be interesting to see if the WD Ultrastar and the Red Pros um, and the Synology drives are going to live together there. But in these tests, it has to be said, in terms of performance, Ultrastar in a single drive capacity has certainly won the day, although it has been noisier and it's the more expensive of the two. Um, obviously, these are both minor figures in the grand scheme of things, but once you multiply them across multi-bay environments, these differences do grow larger over time. So do stay tuned for my larger RAID array testing coming very, very soon. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I know these are very dry videos, but the target audience for these and the people that are interested in this sort of thing, let's face it, this is not a sexy subject and it's very hard to make it anything other than dull and dry. But we will get there together in the end. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. And of course, I will see you on the next video.